Shall we rise up and pray? We are praying this morning that the Lord will grant us his grace to be free at last. And I believe this morning, every one of us, by the special grace of God, we shall be free at last. Shall we pray unto the Lord? Lord, I want to be free from any shackle of self, any shackle of me. Lord, release me, let me go. Lord, release me this morning and let me go. Lord, release me this morning and let me go. Lord, release me this morning and let me go. All the heaviness in my heart, all the heaviness in my spirit, all the self, all the me, all the I, release me this morning and let me go. I want freedom. I want to be free. Completely free. Totally free. Eternally free. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, this morning we bless your name. Thank you for this great gathering and the great things you do in our lives. Thank you for the messages they are preparing us for life and ministry. And thank you for this hour, the hour of freedom. Lord, I pray by your special grace. You open the windows of heaven and truly and truly set everybody free. In the name of Jesus, set every man free. Set every woman free. Set every leader free. Set every pastor free. And give us freedom indeed. This morning we invite the blessed Holy Spirit to this place. Thank you Lord for the answered prayer. In Jesus name we pray. A bigger amen. God bless you. Let's be seated. We're considering this morning and examine a topic from a powerful statement made by unarguably the greatest apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ that ever lived, Apostle Paul, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading verse 20. Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now, now live, in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Why this statement? A genuine child of God. An apostle of the faith. Powerful statement it was. I am crucified with Christ. Man had been struggling for self-concept. We say self-concept, we're talking about self-identity of man. We're talking about man's self-perspective. Who am I? We're talking about man's self-structure. The evaluation of himself. How he sees himself, how others see him, and how he wants to be seen by others. Man is never satisfied with who satisfied with who he is. Man is never satisfied with who he is and how he was made and what he was made for. Listen to that statement again. Man is never satisfied with who he is. Why he was made. What he was made for. Because of that, man keeps on struggling. This was the problem of Lucifer. In his pristine, sinless fears before the creation of man, 
Sin was found in him. What was that sin? The desire to become and to be. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the burial, the oins, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Verse 14, thou art the anointed cherub that cover it, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God, and thou was walked up down in the midst of the stones of fire. But look at verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created, what follows, brothers and sisters, till iniquity was found in thee. What was that iniquity? Let's look at that iniquity as the Bible puts it. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. What was the iniquity of Lucifer? Isaiah 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how are thou cut down to the ground? Who did this weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. Verse 14. I will ascend above the highest of the clouds. And look at what follows. Unfortunate. I will be, what? Like the most high. The iniquity of Lucifer. Look at what he said. And that is what we examine. There was something in him. And Paul said, for me, when I was born again, I crucified that thing. Experiential crucifixion of self. What that topic is telling us is that we have been hearing about self-crucifixion. We've been preaching about self-crucifixion. We've been talking about self-crucifixion. We've been reading about self-crucifixion. What that topic is telling us this morning is that it is time for the practicals. It is time for the practicals. And this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord speak to the church. And let he that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Lucifer said, I will go above the stars of heaven. The stars there is not talking about the starry space where we have the moon and the stars. He's talking about angels. What he was trying to say was that I am going to take over heaven. And this has been the problem of man. When Lucifer did not succeed over there in heaven, this thing he said, he pushed it into man so that man will become to search for self-identity. Look at how he did it. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Look at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5, for God know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as what? Ghosts. Self-identity. 
I want to be more than what God created me for. That is the cell. And I will be like God. So somebody will come and worship me. It was so fascinating to Adam and Eve. And so they ate in order to be like what? God. And they fell. And they fell. What man like to become? This is so dangerous. Very dangerous. All the sufferings that we have in the world today, the wars, the carnage, the poverty, the pain, the destruction, the woes, and the devastation stem from the problem of the self-man. And brothers and sisters, ministers of the, of the church of God, a church suffers, a ministry suffers, a kingdom suffers, a family suffers, a society suffers, and the whole system suffers a total breakdown and collapse if the people within are full of themselves. The self is perverse and very contaminating. It derails us. Pastor Kumuyi said, our general superintendent, he says, the self takes away the crown from the head of man and brings him to be a crawling snail. It contaminates our good deeds. It contaminates our services, our sacrifices, our gifts, and our talents, and makes them nothing and worthless before God. The call to us today at this con Congress, 2019, is to deal with the self-man before we go. God sees it as an affront and challenge to his throne when a man is full of self. And God has always fought any man who sets himself above his human limit. And that is what self can do to man. The proper perception of a self-dominated life, number one. The proper perception of a self-dominated life, number two. The practical paths to experiential self-crucifixion. The practical paths to experiential self-crucifixion. Number three, the power and potentials of a self-crucified minister. When a minister is really crucified, that is when ministry begins. That is when ministry actually begins. Number one, the proper perception of a self-dominated life. Now, there are a lot of people, when we talk about the self, the Bible talks about the self, they, they say, well, I am not part of it. But this morning, let the Spirit of the Lord minister to us. Richard Baxter says something. He said, the self is the most treacherous enemy and the most insinuating deceiver in the world. Of all other vices, it is the hardest to find out and the hardest to cure. But Calvary is available this morning. I said Calvary is available this morning. Let's look at briefly the proper perception of self very briefly. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man, the self is called the old man. Is our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin, the self, is called, number one, the old man. Number two, the body of sin. The body of sin. Look at chapter 7, verse 18. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. Romans 7, 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, the self is the flesh. The self is the old man. The self is the body. When we say the body of sin, we're talking about the principle of sin. The self is the old man. It's the flesh. Let's look at chapter 7, verse 18. Let me finish reading. For I know that in, in me there is in my flesh dwelling, dwelling no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I know not. The old man. And the self is also called the law of sin. The law of sin. Look at verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. 
warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, proper perception of the self-dominated life, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. That is the perception of the self-dominated life. Self-comparisons. Measure it say, by day, measure it by day, measure it themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves are what? Not wise, because that is the self. That is the self. I can do it better. Only I was not given the opportunity. I could have done it better. That's comparison. And that is the self. Look at verse 13. The self is boastful. But we will not boast of things without our measure. That is self. Look at Daniel chapter 4, verse 28. Look at the self there. Proper perception of the self. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 28. Daniel 4. 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake. Lucifer also spake. The king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. You see the self? You know what this man was saying? He said, this is my palace, number one. Number two, I built this great palace by my power. Number three, he said, I built this great palace to show how great I am. You know, one thing I, I, I look here when I was reading this passage, and why God was really angry with this man, is the self. Look at how he put it. I built. You know, he forgot masons were there. He forgot that masons built it. He forgot there was the collaboration of carpenters. He forgot there was the collaboration of steel benders. He forgot the people that were mixing the mortar. He forgot people used their labor to build. He came and said, I build. And such a man, God will be angry with. And it is easy for the self to come out, even in ministry. Sometimes when, when a pastor is transferred, why do the people agitate? Why do the region or the division or the whatever, the district, why do they agitate? Because there has been a kind of orientation by maybe that pastor. The way he talks to them. He says, I build this. When I came to this region, region there was nothing here. Nothing. There were workers there. You went to meet the, the youth ministry. You went to meet the campus ministry. You went to meet the children's ministry. You went to meet the women's ministry. When I came to this division, there was nothing here. I built. And if you allow me to be taken from here, who will build? That is what? Orientation of the minds of the people. And you know what? Church today... We have such orientations. And that is the manifestation of the self. Just there and tell somebody in the campus ministry to move to youth ministry. And the whole ministry has to collapse. Just there to tell somebody to move from the youth ministry to help the children. And the whole ministry has to collapse. Just there right now and tell somebody to move from this place to that place. And the whole ministry must collapse. Why? The self. Proper perception of the self. May the spirit minister to the church this morning. Amen. The self. 
And when we contaminate ministry with self, there is no power. When we contaminate ministry with self, there is no growth. When we contaminate ministry with self, properties will be there. Vehicles will be there. Structure will be there. But the spirit will not be there. Because where self is, the spirit cannot dwell. And this morning, there must be a crucifixion. There must be a crucifixion of self. This ministry must be released. Must be released into growth. Must be released into forward march. And that can only happen when everybody, everybody, every minister, every man, every woman, from house fellowship to, to, to children's church to whatever ministry we have, when every Tom, Dick, and Harry has visited Calvary and said, now I am crucified with who? With Christ. That is when ministry begins. That is when ministry begins. The proper perception. A self-dominated man, he's self-focused. Not God-focused. He's selfish and self-obsessed. He sees everything from his own point of view. He defines the world around him by how he sees it. He cannot do what is right. Even if he does, it is for the praise of man. To be rewarded by man. He wants to be known. He wants to be recognized. He wants to be heard. He wants to be exalted above all his colleagues. Like Haman. He gets offended when he's not recognized. The self-dominated man has deep-seated cravings to be petted, to be embraced, to be liked and preferred. He wants to be promoted. He wants to be worshipped like Lucifer. He wants to be uplifted. He wants to be exposed and consulted. They didn't tell me that is why I am not doing anything. They didn't tell me. And because they didn't tell me if it is collapsing, I will sit by and see it what? Collapse. Because they didn't tell me. He wants to be consulted. That self, may the Lord deal with ourselves. <laughs> He's thirsty for rulership and prestige. He wants to be relevant in all matters. He speaks and behaves like a lord, a master, and an authority. He brags. He's subtle. He's cunning. He's crafty. He's dangerous. He's a nuisance to people around him. Only God knows his real motives. He's walking about, doing this, going here, putting this one there, going up and down. Only God knows his real motives. He sets up a throne for himself. He's offended when he's not addressed with a title. Some time ago, a sister came to me and said, Pastor, I have a letter for you. I said, what kind of letter is that? I said, Pastor, please, here is it, read it. I read it. A brother who is outside the country, who has seen the marriage committee there, the country where he is, is from this country, but stay in another country, Europe, one of the European countries, who has seen the marriage committee there, and they are doing the process. That brother wrote a letter now to this sister in Ghana here. And these were the contents of the letter. Because I read it. He said, dear sister, come on. <laughs> Praise God. I have gone to the married committee. And the process is ongoing. Very soon they will be calling you. But don't forget, I'm doing my PhD. The time when we are brandishing certificates around in the church. Titles around in the church. Don't forget, I am doing my PhD. Yours sincerely. Then he wrote his name. Then I asked the sister what he, she wanted me to do. He said, I just wanted you to see what is going on. I said, well, it is your letter. Go and handle it. She went and prayed. The marriage committee actually called her. And the brother was made to propose. 
And the sister prayed and sent a no answer. And I asked the sister, why did you send no answer? She said, the brother failed from the beginning. I am not going to marry a PhD. I want to marry a child of God. Let's put all these titles into the dustbin this morning. All titles, this one, that one. Jesus said, you are all what? Brethren. Ye shall not be called rabbi. Because ye have only one master in heaven. Do you know I finished my master? Do you know I'm doing my PhD? Do you know I'm doing my first degree? Can we put that and crucify all that? All that ego, can we just crucify it once and for all this morning? This morning, Calvary is waiting for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Titles. That's a self man. He sets up a throne for himself and creates his own territories. He said, this territory is for me. That was Lucifer wanted to do. Nobody can come here. I am the pastor here. I am the choir master here. Don't dare. I am the head of prayer here. Don't dare. Do you know when we started this church in this district? Where were you? I have a territory. I have a throne. Don't dare. The language shows. The action shows. The behavior shows. The attitude shows. I have a territory. And that kind of man, woman, is a nuisance to God. May the Lord deliver us. Amen. And such a man must cry this morning, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? The self must be crucified. Amen. Amen. Point number two, the practical paths to experiential self-crucifixion. The practical paths to experiential self-crucifixion. And Paul is saying that this self must die. It must go. The practical paths. Crucifixion is a method of capital punishment in which the victim is tied or nailed to a large wooden beam and left to hang for several days and to eventual death from exhaustion and asphyxiation. Crucifixion was mostly performed to dissuade its witnesses from perpetrating similar crimes. Listen, victims were sometimes left on display after death as a warning to any other potential criminal. Crucifixion was usually intended to provide a death. Listen, that was particularly slow, painful, gruesome, humiliating, and public. But one notable thing about crucifixion is that you cannot crucify yourself. If somebody wants to die and want to commit suicide, he could take something and drink. People do, unfortunately. Some will unfortunately go to the stand of hanging themselves. But you see, only crucifixion, you cannot do the crucifixion yourself. No man can crucify himself. And look at the statement of Paul. He did not say, I am crucifying myself. He said, I am what? Crucify. If we understand that statement, he's saying that somebody has what? Done it. I have presented myself. And somebody did what? Did it for me. I am crucified. And the reason a lot of people still have the self within it's because when they present themselves to Christ, they present themselves to the Spirit of God for the self to be crucified. They don't stay there for the crucifixion to finish. Because it's painful. Praise the Lord. It's painful. 
So they say, God, I've come to Congress again. Now crucify. I want to be crucified. The God said, you want to be crucified? The self-life? Then you go home and your position is taken away from you. You say, no, this is not the type of crucifixion I was talking about. But you know, when that thing is taken away from you, God is teaching you, you are going through the process of what? Crucifixion. The self. So when you react, then it's telling you, you did not hang there for the crucifixion to do what? To finish. And that is what happens to a lot of people who attend programs. They don't pray enough. They don't stay there enough. See, when Jesus was crucified, and the people went there to see whether he was dead, so that his leg could be broken, the Bible said by the time they got there, he was what? He was dead. And it has taken many people donkey years, and the self is still there. They keep on going to the cross and descending. Last retreat, they were there. They presented themselves. They look at the gallows. When they put them there, when they put one nail there, they say, Aji, they came down. Now they have come to Congress. Now, for Congress, they are so patient with God. So the messages that have come, the first hand has been nailed. The second hand has been nailed. Now the rest, the legs are going to be nailed. Let us stay there. I say, let us stay there. Until the nails are finished. Until we are really crucified. And then when the crucifixion takes place, then the next thing is the dead. We must die on the, on, on the gallows. And we must remain there. When the people came and they were deriding Jesus and they said, if thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Did he come down? When you are truly crucified, you know what Paul said? He said, I die daily. When you are truly crucified, you remain there. Morning, you remain there. When people like you, you remain there. When people reject you, you remain there. When people gossip about you, you remain there. When people take your position away, you remain there. When people beat you, you remain there. When people deride you, you remain there. This morning, I want to remain there. I want to remain there. And when people put you on the ground, you remain there. And when people don't recognize you, brothers and sisters, ministers of the gospel, you remain there. And you say, I die daily. I am crucified with Christ. Now, it's not I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. I remain there. That is proper crucifixion. But the one that we are going up and, and descending and running away and coming back, this morning, we are going to remain there. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. The path to self to proper self-crucifixion, practical paths to experiential self-crucifixion. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye yourself to be dead. What is the word that follows? Oh, you have not opened? Okay, let's, 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 I'm waiting for you. Likewise, Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye yourself to be dead. What? Indeed. That's what I'm talking about. To be dead what? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> it's not somebody who is dead and their eyes are, are showing. Dead what? Indeed. And to sin. That's the practical path. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. What follows? I die what? Daily. There's no time to, 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 to come down. I die daily. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, and verse 23. Look at Luke 9, verse 23. 
And he said to them, Oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. And what? Follow me. Now this man called Baal of Saki, he declared, listen brothers and sisters, he said, I do not know a better epitome of Christian experience than this. This is the daily work of a true child of God. If he lives after any other sort, then he does not live a Christian life at all. The life of crucifixion. The purpose, the real purpose of crucifixion is to kill the false self and resurrect the true self. As long as the false self is not crucified, the true self is still not realized. That's what Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. He's talking about the false self. I no longer live. I'm dead and gone. The life which I now live, that is the true self. Christ lived in me. This is the life the believer is called upon to live. The world's philosophy says, live for self. But God's word says, die to self. And when we say we are dying to self, what it means is that to die to a thing or person is to have nothing to do with it or with that person. And to be totally separated from it or him. To live to a person, Paul said, I live with Christ. Is to be wholly given to that person. Wholly given up to. And to have that person's intimate connection every day. Having the old man crucified just means that one has to feather, one has no, one has no feather dealings with the old man. And from this morning, no feather dealings with the old man. Before I go to the last point, let me show you two things. The process and the path. One, the process of crucifixion. Number one, one of the processes that the Lord takes us through after we have prayed. Number one, rejections and denial. Rejections and denials. Be ready that when you are rejected and denied, and denied for one thing or the other, the Lord is taking you a process of crucifixion and remain there. Just remain there. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. That's the process. Why was he despised and rejected of men? Because that's what the process to crucifixion. Number two, humiliation. Humiliation. When, when we really go through crucifixion, the Lord is going to allow certain types of humiliation in our lives. Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse 2. Isaiah 53 and verse 2. For he shall grow up before Isaiah 53. Verse 3, sorry, verse 3, the last part. But let me read the whole of verse 3. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. Rejection. Humiliation. This is the essence of the life of Christ. Here God uses reproaches, abuse, poverty, loneliness, persecution, distresses, failure, disappointments. Those things, when they succeed, they make us truly crucified. Brothers and sisters, some of us are going through some difficulties and problems, not because God cannot take them away, but because God is waiting for us to be truly crucified. Because that distress you're going through is a process of crucifixion. And God is not going to be in a hurry because you are his child. He will wait till you have come to the realization that you must go down. And that's what he did. Look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 4. That's that what he did to this man. Let, let, let's look at it again. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 24. Daniel chapter 4 verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men. You see? Process of what? The, the self to die. And God did this so powerfully. He said, this guy, I have to drive him out of men to teach him a lesson to come down. From that territory, come down. Verse 25, that they shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You know the story. And where, verse 26, and where are they commanded to leave the stamp of the three, the three roots? Thy kingdom shall be sure, 
listen to that. Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. What word followed? After. After thou hast have known that the heavens, what? Do rule. Yes. God said, wait. The pride, go ahead. You will have troubles. The arrogance, you go ahead. You will have troubles. Arguments and fighting with church pastors and leaders. Go ahead. You will have troubles. You will pray, pray, pray. God said, I'm waiting for you until you will know that what? The heavens do what? Rule. Verse 27. This guy was even admonished. He did not listen. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. And I come to you by the inspiration of the Lord that, O O king, let the spirit counsel this morning be acceptable unto you. If we have we have raised our shoulders to have kingdom that God has not given us. We have raised our thrones and sitting on the throne chair that the Spirit has not given us. Listen, O King. Wherefore, O King, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness. The path, practical path, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lending of thy word, tranquility. After this council, after the Congress, after all the ministers of God coming to minister to us. Look at what Nebu did. Verse 20. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 what? months, one full year, God was waiting for him. One year. After this advice, after he was, he, they appointed his pride, his arrogance, his evil. God waited for one full year. He said, Nebu will change. 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 January, February, March. Then the Easter retreat also came. He went. Nebu went. He came back. April, workers retreat came. Nebu went. He came back. He keep on going. Church, he goes. He comes back. He will never change. He's the trouble causer. He will never change. He's the one that is knocking heads in the church. He will never change. He said, I am. Nobody can say I'm not. And God is waiting for Nebu. And then instead of changing, he woke up one morning. Look at verse 30. The king speak and say, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, he has not finished the word. Full stop has not come. God said, Nebu, are you cool? Are you? It's enough. While the words was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice, a voice from heaven saying, Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. That is God speaking. The kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee. Listen, what word follows? Until. That's God. That's God. So sometimes the trouble, pastor pray for me, pray for me, please. Until. Until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of what? Sometimes people see the church as if it's a fallow church. Listen, the most high ruler in the kingdom of men, and he giveth it to whomsoever, whomsoever, whomsoever he will. So Nebu, there's nothing you can do. Nebu couldn't do anything. He was driven away. He was driven away. And God waited for him. Then one day Nebu woke up, verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> lifted up my eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto Your understanding will return. <laughs> my understanding returned unto me. <laughs> and I blessed the most high. <laughs> and I praised and honored him that liveth forever. Mm. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion? 
and his kingdom is from generation to generation. This is Nebuchadnezzar talking about. Verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as what? Nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none and none and none can stay his hand or say unto him what what do as thou verse 37 now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor who you better change we better change all whose works are true and his ways judgment Oh, look at what follows. Everybody, let's go. And those that walk in pride, he is able to have peace. Point number three. The power and potentials of a self-crucified minister. Brothers and sisters, until a man is crucified, he has no ministry. The power and potentials of a self-crucified minister. We ministers here, by the grace of God, the Lord has chosen all of us. But until we are truly dead and crucified. The Lord will still wait. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and what? Die. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth what? What? Much fruit. Much fruit. You know what Chaspergian said? He said, I have now. And I pray this will be our prayer. He said, I have now concentrated all my prayers into one that I may die to self and live holy to him. That's just special. I have now concentrated all my prayers into one that I may die to self and live holy to him. The Lord is waiting for us to truly die. And he said that as ministers, until we die, the ministry cannot grow. It is when a corn of wheat is dead, is dead. Then it germinates. When you die, you germinate. When Jesus died, he was buried, he resurrected with a new body. And when we truly die this morning, even over here, our language will show. I was telling somebody that wasn't last week, I said, why is everybody complaining in the church? Why? Why? You pass everywhere. Why is this one? Because of this. Why didn't you do this one? Because of that. Why didn't this one happen? Because of that. Everybody has resurrected. May we die. May we truly die. The minister who has experienced self-crucifixion lives a glorious life. And in the midst of the church, in the midst of the community and the world. God wants our minds and hearts to be filled with his holy qualities. If our lives are transformed, we will project the light of his holiness into the darkness of our evil world. Real life, abundant life, power with men and with God. All begins with dying to self. Dying to self is a liberating action that produces joy and peace. It is better to experience it than just to know it without experiencing it. And that's what happened to Jacob. You know Jacob? He was a trick man. Always playing tricks. Always playing tricks. And trouble never ceases from him. He will not die. God is waiting for us to die. Jacob, he played tricks. He got something. You know people who play tricks in the church? In the ministry, they will get something, but it will not last. You play tricks and get position. 
You see, when God raises you up, when God gives you something to do in the church, there must be a corresponding grace and anointing. So when you play trace and get it, the grace and anointing is not there. And so you suffer. And so the work will not grow. And so the work will be something. So when we play tricks and get hooked to a position in the church, we trouble the ministry, we trouble ourselves, we trouble other people. And God waited for Jacob that these tricks must stop when he was coming back. There's no time to read. I'm not reading, but Genesis chapter 32. Let's read verse 24 going. We'll not read all. I was going to read verse 30 to 20, but let's look at verse 24. Let's look at Genesis chapter 32. And look at, look at how God, he graciously waited for Jacob, and he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us this morning. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. How was he left alone here? When he was coming. The first trick, he got the birth right. It was a trick. Then the second one, when he was coming, he said, this man, he might harm me. Let me send him what? Presents. So he collected a lot of presents. And he sent it to him. It's a trick. Instead of changing, he was cunning, playing tricks. Things are happening. But the Lord will have mercy on us. There was this lady that was reported to me and very, very fiery. I don't want to be specific. Very, very fiery in the kind of session that she was working. Very fiery. But can you believe that this lady, a leader in the church, allows somebody's husband to perform customary rites on her? Went to the village and somebody performed customary rites on our sister who is not married. And this person that performed the customary rites, the sister was aware the man had done his wedding in another church. The man from another church. And we, nobody knew. And the sister was everywhere. Playing tricks. That's tricks. Playing tricks. Everywhere she was. Call for a meeting. She'll be the first person to be there. This one, retreat, going up and down. The one day I had a report. I called her. I said, sister, this is what I've heard. He said, oh, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's okay. The pastor of that church with some people came to my house and said, your member has collected one of our member's husband in my house. I said, what? Who is that? That they mentioned this sister. I was shivering like this. And said, the pastor said, I was the one that conducted the wedding of this man. When they went to pay the diary, I was the one that went there. The man and the wife are in my church. But your member has collected the man. I said, what? Then I called the elders of the church. I called this, I called that. We sat down. We look at it, we look at it. It was true. They did a, 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 a diary in the village. I said, you know why I'm saying this? I'll tell you. I said, sister, sit down and go and correct your life. She started crying. I said, why are you crying? He said, the children church, I like it. I like it. I like it. I want to be with my children. I want to be with my children. I will not sit down. I want to be with my children. I said, what? You will not sit down. You want to be with your children. You will kill them. You will kill them. You are playing tricks on the church. And if unfortunately, there's anybody here playing tricks, don't allow Nebuchadnezzar's one year to pass you. Anytime the sister sees me in church, she begins to cry. Up to today. The other day she saw me at the retreat camp. She started crying. Why? He said, I want to go and do my children's work. I said, you will not do children's work. Go and change what you have done. And Jacob played tricks and played tricks and one day it catch up on him. Catch up on him. May the Lord deliver us. 
God, that God is not in a hurry to lay hands suddenly on any man for real ministry who has not experienced self-crucifixion. Do you know why? Because, listen, such a man is a dangerous man. If God lays hands on a man, a woman, who is not truly crucified, and puts a ministry in his hands, and puts a location in his hands, and puts a region in his hands, and puts a division in his hands, and puts a district in his hands, and puts a, a, puts a what? one of the sessions in his hands, we are finished. You know why? Such a man is a dangerous man. Like Pharaoh, in order to please himself, he can order for all children of God's people to be killed if he's in that position. Like Nebuchadnezzar, he would tempt God and bring untold judgment and hardship to his people. Like Data, Korah, and Abara, he would try to poison the minds of the people in God's holy congregation and pull a crowd to follow him to their destruction. Like Cain, when his gifts are not accepted, he will callously and brutally execute his closest brother for envy. And like Saul, when his praises are not sung and others are preferred above him, he will use all scheming to attempt to bring them down, even if he knows he's fighting a loose battle, like Diotrephes in the New Testament. His motives in God's service is to have the preeminence among the brethren and among his colleagues, and like Judas Escarot, he will not care if he has to betray the very leader, the very man, the very people who God used to help him and guided his step to ministerial success. And like Demas, he will abandon the aged apostle at a very cru crucial period of ministry. When, when Christ, D. L. Moody said, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. My last passage, and then we pray. Luke chapter 13, verse 8. Luke chapter 13, verse 8. Luke 13, verse 8. Let me read from verse 6. A great ready to pray, brothers and sisters. He spoke, he spoke also this parable, where a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Verse 7. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years, you know, people who brand this all oh, this number of years and being in ministry, these three years, these three decades, I come seeking fruit on, it, on this fig tree. After all these years, where are the fruits? And find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it the ground? And he answered said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Praise God. Let it alone this year also. This morning, my prayer is, Lord, whatever has happened has already happened. Let me alone this year also. Let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it. And thank it. And that is what the general superintendent is doing. Over here, the messages are coming. That is what our national overseers here are doing. That is what our wonderful, mighty preachers are doing. The, the, the workshop that we attended, that is what it is doing. That we have been coming and going. Some people retreat did not change them. Congress is not changing them. How would it change? How would they change? He said, this year also, I will weed around it. I will dunk it. I will put manure in it. And if it bear fruit, where? And if not, then after that, thou shall cut it down. We are before the throne of this Congress. And God is giving us another chance. Enough of the self-life. Enough of playing tricks like Jacob. Enough of running away from the path of crucifixion. Come. Come. Ministers of God, come. Brothers and sisters, come. Come and die. Be buried completely. And in your resurrection, you will become a glorious in life. Glorious in ministry. Glorious in your service. At this Congress, the Lord is graciously giving us another chance. To graduate from a knowledge-based rhetoric life and get to the practical experience. Come and die. Come and die. Come and die. Stand up and let us pray. Present yourself. Let's present ourselves. And truly die. And truly die. And truly die. 
Let's begin to walk gently with the Lord. Speak softly with ourselves. And come down. And be lowly. And when we are dead indeed, all these arguments will stop. And all the envy will stop. All the jealousy will stop. All the pride will stop. All the scheming will stop. All the creating territories for ourselves. All will stop. All will stop. All will stop. And we are truly dead. When the youth ministry, the youth leaders are truly dead. When the campus ministry, the campus leaders are truly dead. And there is no difference among that. And when the children ministry, the children leaders are truly dead. And in the pastoral ministry, all of us are truly dead. And in the women's ministry, everybody is truly dead. What a glorious church it will be. What a glorious church it will be. Another chance from the Almighty God. 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 It's today or never. Remain at the cross. Heart rendering repentance. That is the path. Prayer. That is the path. Pure childlike humility. That is the path. Changing our attitudes. That is the path. Walk softly and gently before God. That is the path. Remain on the cross of self crucifixion. Strip yourself of all personal desires. And say, Lord, I am nothing. I have nothing. I know nothing. I can do nothing. I deserve nothing. Because we think we deserve everything. We deserve the food. We deserve the accommodation. We deserve the cars. We deserve everything. We deserve everything. And so when it is not given us, then the self will rise and fly. I deserve nothing. Lord, I deserve nothing. I am nothing. I know nothing. I can do nothing. I come empty to you. <laughs>